Hi, and welcome to the Bookish Stitcher Podcast. My name is Jeanette. You can find me on Ravelry, Instagram, and Goodreads as Bookish Stitcher, all one word. I hope you guys have had a wonderful week since we la- I last was chatting with you. Before I get into anything I want to say, my, this is going to be a bit of a different episode maybe, well, not too different, but I normally record on Sundays and during the afternoon, but tomorrow is a special Sunday. It's Easter, and we definitely celebrate, and I have young kids, and we love to do all the Easter fun things. And so it will be a very big, busy day for us, so I won't have time to record tomorrow, but I still wanted to get something up because I have so much to show you guys. So I am recording the night before I usually podcast. So it will still upload at the normal time because I'm going to just up, press upload tomorrow, but I'm recording at night, so hopefully my brain is still um, geared up and ready to go, and I've got some apple cider to my pretty little cup, it's the J, to keep me going while I podcast, and I'm excited to show you guys everything and talk about what I did this last week. So first off, what I did, my father-in-law came down from Indiana to come for a visit for his spring break. He is a professor at a university up there and he does organic chemistry and so he was down here. And he brought me a present from my mother-in-law, which I wanted to show you guys. It's a little Russian thing. And I'm not exactly sure, I looked up what this word means. It means peasant house in Russian and I'm not sure if you would say izba or iezba, but it's a little box, and I just wanted to show you guys because you guys know how I love my Russian art. It's so intricate. So there's the box, and there's the side. Look at that. And then you open it up, and this is just amazing. Can you see that? Look at that. Somebody made that, and it is just beyond words amazing. So I'm so thankful that I have this now and it's so pretty. I just, there are so many skilled people in this world and I, I'm so glad that I now have this to look at and cherish every day. So he gave me that while he was here for my, that was for my mother-in-law. So I'm really thankful for that. And then while he was here, we also went and just did a whole bunch of stuff around town. We went to the zoo, we went to different restaurants, a beer garden, and lots of fun stuff. So that it was a great week. And I was a little nervous at the outset that I would not get a lot of knitting done. But I did. So let me show you my finished objects for this week. These are my mom's socks. They're done and they're ready to go in her goodie bag of birthday wonderfulness. And the light's pretty good. It ha- There's no natural light coming in since it's nighttime. But I have all the lights in the downstairs turned on. So these are for my mom. And they're just plain socks with a shorter cuff because she likes that. And the heel is kind of bunched up because these are sock blockers for my size foot, which is a size 7. And my mom wears a size 11, so there's just a lot more sock on the sock blockers. So it's not as fitted. And the yarn I used for this is Regia. Viva la color. So those are done. The next thing that I finished is my Firefly Chai Shawl by Kati Moore. And it's done. And it hasn't been blocked. It's mine's more the size of a scarf because I didn't do the large, which would be more shawl like. But that's what it looks like when I need to block it out, of course. And this yarn that it was done in was some of my oldest stash. It was Fanny's Fingering Weight in the colorway Sedona. I got this from my local yarn store a very long time ago. And the colors are browns, different shades of like browns and copper with different shades of blue and almost a cream, like turquoisey blue, so bluish green. And then the final, oh, and that was a... That pattern was gifted to me by Kara 
and um, let's see, a little while ago. So thank you so much, Cara. I really enjoyed knitting it. And then my final finished object is my buttercup. Ta-da! It still has to get all of these, you will notice, do not have their ends sewn in because that happens later. <laughs> that happens right before I want to wear it at the last minute possible. So this is my buttercup top and it's by Heidi Kiermeyer. The yarn is January Yarns. I do need to pin it and block it out as you can see so that that will kind of sit nicely. But it's really, really pretty. And I really, really like the design on that. And what I did on this, I followed the pattern mostly. It needs, the sleeves need to be, everything needs to be pretty much blocked out. But I did do alternate the neckline a little bit because I tried it on and it was really, really big and a little bit too risque for my tastes. So I, the pattern tells you to pick up a certain number of um, stitches for every different stitches that are on there. And so I did it to where it's even smaller just to make it so I was comfortable with my finished object to wear. So that is all of my Finished objects, three. So what do you do when you have empty needles? You cast on a whole bunch. And the one thing I don't have down here to show you today is my wrought iron socks. They're those gorgeous cabled socks by January Yarns. And this, uh, the buttercup was actually done by January Yarns out of the squash blossom colorway. So I've been using a lot of January Yarns. Those wrought iron socks didn't get worked on this week just because I was trying to finish stuff off and then once I'd finished it I was so excited I was casting on new things. So let me show you some of my different cast-ons. I've gotten into my gift patterns that were given to me for my birthday and one of the patterns actually was given to me I think around Christmas time and I'm so glad that I'm finally casting it on. Because I've been so looking forward to it and I was so excited when this sweet person gifted me this pattern. So the pattern that I'm about to show you has just been cast on. And it's my in my Bags by Awesome Granny bag. Which is great for holding all this yarn. And as you can see, I just cast on. There's a couple rows done. Because I just finished the top today and then I cast this on. So barely any, but this is going to be the Mondo Cable Cardi, and it was gifted to me by Tanya, who is Celestia22 on Ravelry. And I have my wonderful Jelly Stitch Markers little sheep. It's really, really cute. And this giant hunk of targy wonderfulness is some mustache yarn. It's huge. It's my size of my head but it's really pretty. It's called Oyster Shell, and it's grays with light, subtle pops. I don't even say pops, but hints of pink and purple, and it's just, it's such an elegant yarn. That's the only thing I can really think of word to describe it. It feels very, very elegant. This is what it looks like in the skein. It's a huge skein. There's the most. So it's really big. And just these two are going to be enough for an entire sweater. So that's the first of my Rhinebeck sweaters because I get to go to Rhinebeck for the, hopefully, for the first time this year ever. And I am so excited. And I have in my mind that I want to knit three Rhinebeck sweaters. So I better get on that. <laughs> and then the next thing I have is a pattern that was gifted to me for my birthday by Casey, who is the reading knitter. And this is the Monster Cow by Julia Allen. And it's in my story yarns bag. And then this is what I have so far on this. The two colors I'm using. This is some, I put the tags all in here. Some another crafty girl yarn. I thought I put the tags in, but I guess, oh wait, here they are. This is another Crafty Girl yarn. And the two colors are Gronkle, I believe, which is the brown with hints of green, and the blue is a Lagoon. And those are just, that's her 
label right there. And she does amazing worsted weight yarn and fingering weight and everything. But I just really love her worsted for variegated yarns. So again, sorry, clicking. That's what that looks like. It's really pretty, those blues in with the browns. I'm really excited to see how it's going to be. And it's going to be so squishy. So thank you so much, Casey. I'm enjoying knitting that a ton. The next one I have is a pattern that was gifted to me by Loopy Liz. And this is the Ruched Baby Cardigan by Terry Cruz, I believe. And I'm knitting this. This is in a Tangerine Designs bag. Try to remember to show all the things. And if I forget to mention anything or if you ever have any questions, just message me and I will reply back and let you know. This is out of some Lorna's Laces. And this is the Camp Loopy colorway, the Mount, Rocky Mountain Primrose. Camp Loopy does is the thing that the Loopy U does over the summer where they have you do different projects with their yarn. And then at the end, if you complete them all with yarn that you've bought from their store you can do it online or whenever and then you can win a prize and so I haven't done it in recent years because I've been going to retreat I, I didn't do it last year because I've been going to when I went to the retreat I didn't want to do both but this is the yarn that I won from that and I'm using it to knit up the pattern that Liz gifted me and it's really really cute I am in a mother's group with a lot of other people and some of them, a few of them right now, just happen to be pregnant and so I'm trying to get a head start on some of my baby knitting because I kind of tend to get caught unawares and a whole bunch of baby showers will happen all at once and I won't have anything but I will, and I'll have to do baby knitting all at once so I'm trying to get ahead. But I think it's so pretty. It's going to be the perfect little girl sweater. And I'm going to do it in a size 12 month and then have little booties or something with it. So I think that'll be an adorable set. So thank you so much, Liz. And I really look forward to knitting a ton of those because it's a perfect pattern to do for baby knits because you can do variegated. And I plan on getting some yarn in a tonal and kind of knitting one for my daughter because that's what Liz gifted it to me in mind for one for my daughter. Now the last work in progress I have to show you guys, since I'd finished those socks for my mom, I cast on some socks for my husband, and this is in my Sew For You bag, which I really, really like. And the yarn that I cast on was Knitter's Nightmare Demon Barber. And this is some yarn that I got at SSK last summer. I got it into my head that I should knit up all my SSK yarn before the next SSK and then I promptly reminded myself that that's impossible because before I went to the retreat I had I think one or two sweater quantities of yarn in my stash and one or two skeins of self-striping after the retreat I had a lot more so there's no way I could knit up a bunch of sweaters and so many socks before the retreat but I just want to kind of start working a lot mainly with my retreat yarn so the Targi that I showed you before that I'm knitting my first Rhinebeck sweater in, that is some yarn that I got at SSK. And then, and that's also counting for the Year of the Sheep, April is Targi month for the U University. And this is another SSK. So like I said, Demon Barber, it's a reference to Sweeney Todd, if you guys know what that is. It's a musical with Johnny Depp and Helena Bonham Carter. And these are so awesome. They're socks for my husband. And you may be looking at saying, that that's sparkly. Is your husband what? It's not purple sparkly though, it's silver. It's just showing up purple for some reason. But you may think, your, will your husband wear sparkly socks? And he has said yes. He said that if anybody, he likes to wear them to work. He likes to wear odd socks. He said that if anybody teases him about his socks, he'll just say that they're vampire socks and they only sparkle during the day and at night they don't sparkle. And that's, of course, a reference to a movie, Twilight, the movie Twilight, which he does not like and he likes to make jokes about because he is definitely not a Twilight fan. <laughs> and so that is all of my works in progress. 
spinning. I have spinning, but I can't show it to you. Wah, wah. Because I am doing gift all the spinning right now. And hopefully I will finish some stuff that's for me. But right now it's all for gifts. So I can't show you guys until I, I'll show you pictures after I've gifted it to the people. So let me show you enabling. I got two clubs in. Start with this first one. This is Spartacus Dyes, and it's the Gilmore Girls Yarn Club. Spartacus Dyes. It's that. It's blues, and it's really pretty. I like it a lot. And this is First Snow Gilmore Girls Yarn Club, March 2015, hand dyed forge net. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know she did that. Uh, that's a cute touch. Josh Josh Whedon. Joss Whedon, sorry. Worsted Superwash Merino. It's 218 yards, and I think that's just so pretty. My son loves this. He might steal it because he's also a knitter, as some of you might know. And then the other thing that came, I talked last week about um, how I was not renewing the Moon Rover Club, not because it's not fantastic fiber. It is, and I will definitely, if I see any colorways and I can snag them, I'll definitely be getting more. But just because I wanted to build up my fiber stash with a variety. So every few months I'm going to try a new club. So my club for the next couple months is going to be the Three Waters Farm. And I have spun some of theirs. The one that you saw on the bobbin that was the Blue Sunset or Sunrise. Those gorgeous blues and oranges. That's Three Waters Farm. And I've really been enjoying spinning it. So I'm excited about this club. This is the March braid, and it's navy, kind of copper, kind of a marigold, and then a sky blue with pops of almost um, olive green. It's really pretty, and I really like it. It's pretty true to color. I like it a lot, so I'm excited. That is all the enabling I have. So, we had some awesome giveaways. We had the sweater cowl, which ended, and I drew for that. And so what I did for that was because, which is totally fine, there was a whole bunch of chatter in the thread, people saying they liked each other's sweaters and stuff like that. And it was great, and it was really nice to see people telling each other, good job. So what I did, since there weren't just finished pictures, was I went through and every finished picture of a picture of a finished sweater I numbered. So the first picture of a finished sweater, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, all the way down. And the winner was no, was post number 16, and that's Pocketsies, P-O-C-K-E-T-S-E-S. -E -E I just don't know right there. And so Contact me, Pocketsies, and I will get your prize out to you. And the prize I have in here is an Erin Lane bag with birds. And then a skein of Miss Babs Yaza in the Spread Your Wings colorway. And now I will give her a month, I guess, that fair to contact me and tell me that she saw this. And if she doesn't, then I will draw for somebody else to win. From this way. So I really enjoyed that and I got basically two sweaters in it and I hope you guys really enjoyed that and had fun. And definitely do a sweater knit along again sometime. So let's see. The next thing we have giving away is giving away the farm. And this is a book that, let's see, I put it on two weeks ago I think and the day for the drawing is supposed to be tomorrow because that's when I normally record, but since I'm recording today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give everybody still till tomorrow, and I'm going to lock the thread when I normally would have locked it if I had recorded a normal time and it hadn't been Easter. And so what I'll do is then I'll lock it, and then I will draw, and then I'll just contact that person, post it in there who won, and they can see that so I can get that in the mail to them. So that's what I'll do is to give it fair because I don't want anybody to not have a chance to enter when I said that you would get till tomorrow. So go ahead and go enter. It's a signed copy and it has beautiful pictures in it and it's a really cute story. And I wanted to say about this is that even if you don't win, if you have a Kindle or any kind of e-reader, I believe it's available for 99 cents or something. 
So definitely go check that out. And let's see. So I wanted to talk next before I get into the book about a new the new cow that we have going on for April and May. And it is the knit something with your favorite color. And so just to briefly give a description of what we're doing, and this is in the Bookish Stitcher All One Word podcast group on Ravelry. If you have, it's knit with your favorite color. So if you like all the colors, then knit with whatever color you want. If you, my favorite colors are green, purple, blue, then I could knit with those. If you just like red, then you could knit three different red things. So what there will be, is there are going to be three different prizes. There's this, some Wooly Wonka mini skeins. There are these, some purdy things. Rolex. These are gorgeous. And then there's this, a notable gnome kit. And so what you can do is if you want to enter for all three of those, then you knit three different things in, in the same color and different colors. I don't care about the colors, but it has to be three different things. You can't knit one hat and enter it for all three. That's the only big rule and that you have to finish in the time frame. So yeah, if you want to enter for all three, knit three different things and then enter for all three and that will be great. So that is the new knit along. And then of course, pretty soon we'll have the Terry Pratchett along and stuff like that. And we're still going. This is the last week for our night circus read along. People have been having such wonderful just thoughts and discussions in the thread and I am loving reading through those. We were talking about what our favorite tent would be to visit and something big just happened in the book. I'm rereading it, but stuff just hits you again when you read it the second time and you remember it and you just feel it all over again because the book is so wonderful at being magical. And so I forgot to bring it down here actually, but I got yarn to do a night circus shawl. A whole bunch, or night circus, I'm thinking a shawl. A whole bunch of people in the thread were talking about the colors that the people who are kind of night circus groupies, they call them reveillers, I believe, or reveillers, they go around and they follow the circus and they wear the black and white of the circus to blend in better, but then they wear a dash of red to show that they are patrons or people that go to the circus and not actual people working at the circus. So people were showing different yarns they had and talking about doing like white and black shawls with red beads and so many gorgeous ideas and yarns are being posted in that thread and I it just it sucked me in and I, I even though white black and red are not colors I often wear I needed to have something to knit along I just did so I got some yarn and I'll be showing you guys that because I'm going to cast it on and just go for it even though I already have a whole bunch of other stuff on the needles so it's the last week for that it's not too late if you want to jump in. People read that book like like that so fast and probably could have done the read-along in less than half the time because so many people have been finished for forever. So it's just a learning thing for me, learning how long to pace the, the read-alongs. But this is last week for that, and I've been really loving discussing things with you guys on the group. Okay, so the book for this week is one you might have if you are like me and you love to go in bookstores and just walk around in happiness and bliss you might have seen this on shelves a while ago it's empty mansions by bill deadman and paul clark newell jr And it was a number one New York Times bestseller, and it says, The Mysterious Life of Ujet Clark and Spinning of a Great American Fortune. And it, it's a French name, so it looks like Huget, but since the French is pronounced differently, it's U, Ujet. And I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, but this was a book that really fascinated me. I am a very big lover of history and stories. I love, I think everyone has an amazing story. No matter how boring or plain you feel like your life may have been, 
it's interesting. It's amazing. Everybody's life is different. And even those simple, boring moments that we sometimes take for granted are amazing to other people. So I just, I love reading people's stories. And so this had been a book that I've been wanting to read for a while. And it's really interesting to me. Let me tell you a little bit of what it's about. It's about the daughter of William A. Clark and Anna Clark. And William was a lot older than Anna. And Anna was, I believe, from Quebec or French-speaking Canada. And she was very enamored with French culture and she was spent a lot of time over there studying and spoke French. And they got married, even though Anna was a, a lot, a lot younger than Clark. He could have been her grandfather, I think. But so they had two daughters and one of the daughters did not survive past her teens, and the other daughter did, and that was Ujet. And the father died, and then the mother and the daughter kind of, I guess, basically lived together in various different parts of the country. But Ujet, she got married, and then it didn't work out for some mysterious reason. This book is full of mystery, I feel like, because... There's so much that we don't know. So Ujette, she goes and kind of lives her own life and her mother dies. And they find her years later, because she needs a doctor medical attention, living in this place. And after that, she moves into the hospital and she's there for 20 years. And she's just, she's one of the most wealthiest heiresses. And so she's just buying up different houses. She was very into collecting dolls. And so she just starts buying dolls from everywhere and doll houses. She's very into French culture. She spoke French fluently, and that was one of the languages that I guess she most conversed with others other than English. And she was also very into Japanese culture, and she was great at painting. She played the violin. She was just very, you know, well-rounded. And it's just very fascinating to me because... She was basically so private in that she was almost, she was basically a recluse because the last picture of her taken, she was a very big public figure of being that wealthy, was taken, I believe, right after her divorce. I don't remember the exact year right now, but it was taken after her divorce or right during her marriage, that time period. And then there wasn't another one taken of her. And it's just so interesting because... I don't think we will ever know this, the whole story, the true story, because it is given in pieces from different people. And because Ujet was so private and never gave an interview, and she's now deceased, even though she lived over 100, I believe 104 years old, we will never know the truth about any of this. And it just is so amazing to me to think about. I love pondering things out in my mind and because as you're reading through this story you keep thinking you keep kind of switching sides because she's in the hospital these people at different times are trying to get money from her and some people you know and the family can't get to her but do they really want to visit and then the family wants money and there's just all this back and forth and it's very odd too because she was very very generous but not to nonprofits, not to organizations. She was very generous on an individual basis to friends, occasionally family members, like a goddaughter. And by very generous, I mean giving them houses and Bentleys and millions of dollars. <laughs> so it, it was just very fascinating. And I would have loved to have heard an interview, an actual interview with her, but she never gave one of those. She was very, very private. And it was often thought in her family that she was not all there mentally, but that just turned out to not be true. You know, she was very intelligent. She just chose for her life to be different. And, you know, different people have different tendencies toward things. I would not do well in a life, in a public life, in forms of if I couldn't, you know, go out and get married or go on a honeymoon or go anywhere and do anything without everybody seeing me and judging me and making observations about what I was doing, I might choose to become a recluse 
I'm a very private person then too. You can see I'm getting red just at the thought of having to deal with that. So from that perspective, I can completely understand that. And I just, if you like books that are about history and different time periods, and this book has actually made me want to go and read a bunch more on the Gilded Age because I find it so fascinating. These men that just made millions and the houses that they built and the lavish lifestyles that they led, I felt very kind of sad for the architects of these wonderful houses because they probably spent years and years designing these houses for these wealthy millionaires and spent years and years, of course, building them. And then in the case with the Clarks, they their one house in New York, they were only residing in it for 11 years before it was demolished. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine that. If you had spent your life working on things, imagine if you knit a house cozy and then the house was on fire and your entire work was burned. I know that's a silly idea to think about, you know, but it just, I can't imagine that as an architect. I'm not an architect, but if I were, I just can't imagine that. So this is the book for this week, Empty Mansions by Bill Dedman and Paul Clark Newell Jr. And I recommend it if you like books about people's stories and books about this different time period. It had a lot of really good pictures and really interesting things. And the story is, it's just such a mystery still to me. And I could have read, I read this over three months. I could have read it in a couple days because it was really well written. The chapters are broken down into tiny, tiny few pages so that you can kind of get to it when you need to, which is very useful for me as a mother of small children. So that's everything I have for you guys this week. It's Saturday, the night before Easter. So the Easter Bunny has to come to my house. So I have to hop off to bed and hide so that he can come and bring treasures and wonderfulness and do all kinds of shenanigans around my house. I get a little goofy nights before holidays. You have no idea. I get very excited and I am like in a seven or eight year old kid. <laughs> so I hope you guys, if you celebrate, have a wonderful Easter. If you don't celebrate, then I hope you have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful upcoming week. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.